Hey, Professor Suckler here, and yes, it is that time of year again for your annual research health checkup. That's right, just like a patient coming into the doctor's office, we're gonna provide that tune-up, that checkup, that overview of five essential health indicators of your research. This is gonna be incredibly valuable for masters, PhD, even professor researchers, wherever you are in your journey, because these are five essential nuts and bolts that you have to have. They are indispensable for you to be in good health and to really be thriving and get on that proverbial fast track that we aim to help you get on. I've published over 400 peer-reviewed papers. It wasn't always that way though. I really struggled and made about all the mistakes that you can make, including these five essential ones that we are going to cover today. So pull up a cup of coffee and mm, I want you to be really honest with yourself if these things are on point, and I'm gonna make suggestions on how you can correct them. So let's go straight in. Number one, do you have clarity and vision for what you need to do? What are the most important things that you need to accomplish? And I'm not just talking about over the medium term in years time, but I'm talking about breaking the whole process down of your research into small manageable chunks. So that is to define it over the next three months. What is the most important thing you need to get done to get you to the next level? I get so many researchers who say, oh, I'm feeling lost, I'm going in circles, I feel like I'm pulled in multiple directions, I'm getting asked to do this conference paper, I'm getting asked to help on this paper from somebody else in my lab. I want you to create a roadmap. Do you have a roadmap? Because I find nine out of 10 students who I've worked with have never created a kind of research roadmap for themselves of a big picture of how everything fits together and what step they need to take right now. The reality is you need a laser-like focus on these three-month goals and especially to boil that down to the one paper or the one chapter or that one thing you need to get done because if you can get that one thing done and make it your top priority, odds are you're going to be okay. And you need that laser-like focus to exclude from all the distractions. So many students say, oh, I can't multitask. I'm just not shuffling all these things. No, actually, you need to get better at being indistractable and focusing on optimizing that one thing. Number two, do you have a clear topic in place? And, you know, a lot, I would say about 90% of your success ultimately boils down to how good a topic you have. If you are kind of swimming in a very small pond, you could be the biggest fish in that pond, but it's gonna be very hard to publish. You're not gonna get invited to big international conferences because they're just not there. And you're always gonna feel like you're struggling. Whereas even if you're kind of a small or medium sized fish in a very big pond, there is a sea of opportunity out there. So I want you to ensure you've got a topic that yes, you're passionate about, but that there is scientific debate. There is a lot of activity in your field. You can really check that in Google Scholar. Do you see citations on your topic? Can you forecast impact? Because the closest correlate of your success is gonna be existing papers that are in your space and in your area. Are they publishing top journals? Are they getting picked up and highly cited and generating some objective measures of impact? The other thing you need to ensure you've got a clear topic is uh, that it's not too big and it's not too small. Now, I know this is kind of hard to dial in to get just right, but usually for the vast majority of you, a topic is gonna to relate to things, the impact of something on something else. And so you need to make sure you've got maybe a clear outcome and a clear intervention or exposure and something that you're looking at. Again, this is maybe not the case for everybody, but if you're just doing something very exploratory uh, and maybe just looking at an outcome, what do we know, for example, about health inequalities? It's too big, it's too vast, it's not focused, it's gonna be very hard to publish. So those two things on, on your topic, make sure there's a lot of activity, there's debate, and make sure it's clear and well-defined is an all, important uh, indicator of the health of your research agenda. Number three, is your productivity on point? Critically important, and I think we don't pay enough attention to really engaging in the process of improving continuously our productivity. One sign that your productivity is gonna be good is that excitement you feel when you wake up in the morning to say, get to the library to work on your topic or get to the lab or whatever routine space, you need a routine space where you work regularly, consistently, that you've associated with this is my productive space where I'm not distracted and I'm gonna go. And you kind of like operate conditioning like the dog that hears the bell 
smell and start salivating, you, you get in that space, it's like, go. I want you to have that feeling. For a lot of you, if you haven't protected your passion, your productivity is gonna suffer. And you might find yourself dragging yourself in to go work and I don't really feel like doing it. And this is again, a sign that something is off. Something is very wrong and you're at risk of a burnout and that would be the ultimate demise of your productivity. We won't have time to really diagnose the symptoms of what I call low P or low or inadequate productivity, but I've got a full video below that looks in detail at three or four of the most common symptoms of low productivity and will give you practical strategies on how to address it. But really, if you're feeling slow, there can be some good reasons for it. There can also be some not so good reasons for it. And if you do feel like your productivity is not on point, this at our annual checkup is a good time to reflect on why and make an action plan to address it as you go forward in your next three month block. Number four, mentorship. Do you have a mentor? And I'm not talking about just a supervisor, somebody who's overseeing you, kind of looking over your shoulder, making sure you're doing the things you need to do to make his or her agenda okay and make sure your institution is happy. I'm talking about a real mentor, a mentor who is invested in your success, a mentor who will be happy and will like crack out the champagne and cheers with you when you do well, when you finish your PhD, when you get the big project done. A mentor who really can has been there before, right where you're sitting, and knows what you need to steer you to really thrive and get to that next level where you're trying to go. Listen, I find so many students don't actually have a real mentor. They don't have real mentorship and they struggle to get the feedback and guidance they need. That mentor is more often than not, not somebody who's just been assigned to somebody. It's almost somebody who you see almost as though they could be a friend or they could even feel like a family member, somebody who you don't feel embarrassed about to go to for help, whether that help is connecting you with the technical resources to do your project or even the emotional resources when you're just feeling down and slow and, and not sure what's going on. Because guaranteed, a mentor has been there before, done that, and a good mentor has also helped steer the ship of research of a mentee to success. I also think it's important that a mentor does have the track record because I do see people going to work with uh, professors and they, they have a dream say, I wanna publish in high impact journals, but they're working with professors themselves who may not have done that or achieved that goal. How are they gonna help you to achieve a goal they themselves have yet to accomplish? So I really want you to take a moment and think about what mentor you have. And I think sometimes people let on as though they're these independent geniuses that haven't had mentors, but the truth is they, they have had tons of them. I've had multiple mentors at the same time and each juncture of my career, as I think going from masters to PhD to assistant professor through to full professor, I've had different mentors along the way who helped me get to that next stage because often that cliche is really true. What got you here won't get you there. If you don't have a mentor, we've got again, a dedicated video on how to actually identify and reach out to effective mentors and a strategy for engaging them so that you are mutually invested in each other's success, creating a win-win cycle. Lastly, any research agenda is gonna depend on your ability to write and communicate clearly. So often I see students, researchers have not had any writing training and this is a terrible loss. This is terribly inefficient. And if you haven't had any writing training, I want you to really think hard, hey, you know, on a scale one to 10, how is my writing doing? Am I a good writer? Am I improving? Have I made progress over the last year when I did this checkup? And if you haven't, and if you are feeling like you're just not writing that well, and this can especially be the case if English is your second language, I, I want you to invest in some writing training. We've got a really good writing system that we've cracked the code on writing, making it simple and easy. And even if you've never written a paper before, helps you to feel really confident about your writing. Again, link in the below because this is just a checkup. This is just our signs that things are healthy. And if they're not, I wanna connect you to the trainings that are gonna get you on points. So you're gonna find all the trainings that I recommend on each of these five points in the link below. But coming back to writing for a second, this is a process of no, steady, continuous improving. I continue to improve my writing every single day. If you don't feel like you're improving your writing, if you don't understand, you know, where is my writing wrong or not so good, then you're not really creating that process of steady improvement. It's like a tennis player. I often say, you know, when I, when I first got on, uh, on court to try to play tennis, I was terrible. I played with my, my buddy every day and we didn't get any better. It was only when I got lessons and I learned the proper way to play that I could auto-diagnose and spot things in other people's games and, and, and especially 
especially in my own game, that needed improvement. So I want you to get that own self-awareness as well about your writing so that your time when you do sit down to write is more efficient and not only are you communicating more clearly and avoiding a lot of headache and frustration when people don't understand you, especially say peer reviewers on your research or grant proposals that don't get understood. Also, so that you can get the most benefit out of the time that you're investing in yourself. Uh, guys, so these are the five diagnostic markers for me of what you need for a thriving research agenda, no matter where you are in your research journey and career. And one last thing, join my Facebook group because it's gonna be a valuable source of support, 100% free, and it gives us the chance to communicate directly. And I hope to see you there. You're not gonna want to miss this next video that I've got for you.